Merry Christmas, everyone. Today, what we're going to do is cook a seven bone prime rib. This is a, a cab, what they call the certified Angus beef cut. Not to be confused with a prime. This is still choice, but it's an upper echelon of meat that is available. Uh, during the holiday season, you usually can't get a bone in. What we have here is a seven bone in, as you can see. Seven bones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven bone in, which is basically the entire side of the beef. Um, I've had the butcher debone it and then truss it, tie it back together and put it, um, uh, tie it all back together. Um, I'm gonna prep it, uh, keep it simple. I'm just gonna wrap it up with some olive oil. Then I'm gonna hit it with some fresh ground pepper, some salt, a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of uh, minced uh, dried onion. And then I'm gonna dress it on top with fresh onion that I cut. Uh, so let me do that and then we'll uh, take a look at uh, what we have when we're done. So we've got this all seasoned up. As you can see, kosher salt is very important. That way it keeps the moisture in that meat. This is a seven bone. It happens to be 13 pounds. I preheat the oven to 475. Basically what I want to do is I want to sear it for the first 20 minutes at 475. The goal here is this roast should take about three hours to cook, uh, plus or minus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sear it first and then I'm going to put the thermometer in. I've got the meter, which is probably one of the best. It's uh, tied into an app. Um, I've used it multiple times. It works great. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dress it up with some onions and basically set it. Make sure you don't peak and keep that oven going all morning. So uh, the meat, if you're looking, it's important that you have a good butcher. If you're in the New England area or in the Boston area, I like Market Basket. I think they have the best butchers. If you're in the Waltham location, ask for Joe. He'll take care of you and set that up. Um, again, you should be prepared to pay for something like this, about $11 a pound. If you do go with a prime uh, boneless, and that's one of the things you can find during the holiday season, um, I recommend you can ash, uh, do one of those roasts. You're going to be paying almost double. Runs anywhere between uh, a little bit more, rather, about $16 a pound. But I will tell you, it's the same process. Bone intake's a little bit better, and you'll see how I carve it up uh, in just a bit. All right, if you notice, got a pan. And I've got my, um, my marac. You always want to set it up with the fat up on top, bone on the bottom. All right, we're back now. Um, we've been searing the meat for 20 minutes at 475. We're going to take it out. I've got this great new app. It's called Meter. Um, this has been a great device. Once you plug that in, um, you basically connect it to your phone. You set exactly the temperature that you want or how you want the meat prepared, which is medium rare. Once that goes in, it's pretty simple after that. You can just monitor everything from your uh, phone, which is really cool. So we're gonna plug that in. Do not put this in before you sear it. The uh, gauge will actually melt. So you wanna do it after, and that's what we're doing. So we're gonna pull it out real quick and we're gonna dress it up with some onions, put in the meat, uh, thermometer and then we're gonna plug it back in we're gonna drop it down to a 325 and we're just gonna let it slow cook all right so let's do that if you notice right on the edge. If you feel with your finger uh, fingernail, you can feel the edge. That edge needs to go into the thickest part of the meat, which happens to be right here. You wanna make sure that that piece goes all the way in into the thickest part of the meat. Again, this is a 13 pound roast, so we wanna get it right in the middle, right in that middle part. As I said, gonna dress it up with some onions on top. Get some nice flavor. And later we'll be able to use this for the au jus sauce on the outside. I'm going to get this thing right back in. And as I said, we're going to drop this down to 325. Now another product I like 
is this Firm Grip. This is the best knife sharpener that you can buy in the market. Costs you about 12 bucks. All you do is just run it on the sharpener twice, run it on the hone tw twice, and it'll give you sharp knives. Best knife sharpener around. All right, this is the meter. Like I said, it's already plugged in. This is the app. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on a target. We're gonna set up to cook. And we wanna do, we've got a prime rib, so we're gonna kick, click on steak. We're gonna click on uh, where is it? Uh, uh, roast. And on roast, we are going to do a rib roast because, again, there's bone in there, so rib roast. Um, I want to go with a medium rare, so just click on the medium rare. Click on medium rare, click start cook, and here we go. Our target is 135 degrees. Right now, the ambient temperature, which is the temperature inside the oven, is 237, and this is the in, uh, internal, 53. When this gets to 135, that's gonna give me an alarm. It's gonna tell me to pull it out. And then, the cool part about this uh, app is it gives you the estimated, uh, it gives you the estimated time. I mean, it will get closer as it adjusts, but it also tells you how long to let it rest. Resting is very important. Every time I use this app, every time I cut that slice of that first slice of uh, beef, and as I start carving up that roast, there is no juice. And that's the most important thing. The juice stays within the cut of meat versus all over your cutting board. So as I mentioned, we're gonna keep an eye on this right here. It's gonna adjust, as you can see, prime rib. Our target is 135. That includes, the 135 does include the actual uh, rest period because once you take it out, it does continue to cook. So our ambient temperature is 245. That's gonna fluctuate back and forth, but these two numbers are what I'm going to keep an eye on. This is cool because it has an alarm. As it starts getting closer, it starts letting me know when I need to pay attention. Rule of thumb is usually 20 minutes a pound with a bone, uh, with a bone in, and just keep an eye, uh, keep an eye on it between three and four hours on a slow, um, slow roast. As I mentioned, we've got this set at 325. Our anticipated eat time is anywhere between two to three o'clock in the afternoon. I did put the roast in at 10.15. All right, we're almost there. We only got 51 minutes left. The internal temperature is 112. Our goal is 135 for medium rare. Inside is 302. The time is 12.46. It's still roasting at 325. We'll check back less than an hour and see what we have. All right, if we check in the temperature right now, we're looking at 122 internally. Our target is 30 and our out, um, heat is 302. As you can see in the oven, it's 325. This is much more accurate than any oven. So we're just getting ready to pull this out. Probably be ready in about 115. And then from 115, we're gonna let this rest for a uh, serving time of two o'clock. Also, if you notice, it's very important to make sure you have the right type of knives. Knives are important. This right here, you've got a chef's knife, and here you've got a steamship knife. I like to use a steamship knife, much larger. As I mentioned before, it's very important to have sharp knives. First grip, this is about $13. It's probably one of your best buys. This is how easy it is to sharpen. Run it in once, run it in twice, run it through hone once, run it through hone twice. Same with the, um, with the um, a larger knife. One, two, one, Two, make sure you wipe those off because there will be a little bit of metal that comes off. Cutting board's important too. If you notice right here, here's a little trick on granite countertop. Don't try to put a plastic right on top of the granite because it'll slide over, all over the place. What I do is I moisten two paper towels and then after that, I just drop this right on top. As you can see, this doesn't move, it doesn't budge as I'm carving up. 15 minutes, we'll come back and we'll take a look at what we've got for our, uh, for our final prime rib. Two more minutes left. I did call an audible if you noticed. We were at 135 and I actually pushed the target, which you can adjust real easy on this thing, to 130. So 130, two minutes, the alarm has been going off one minute. I'm gonna take this thing out, I'm gonna let it rest and we'll see what the rest time is before we can carve it. Right now the oven is 300, target is 130, we're at 128. Uh, we're getting close to uh, getting this thing ready. See right now it says remove from heat. We're at a perfect temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Look at that roast right there. It is an absolute perfect roast. You can see right at medium rare. Get the angle on that. You can see a nice end cut. We got all seven bones. 
Take a look at it right over there. Come around the other side. We've got the perfect roast. We're gonna let this sit and it's gonna tell us right now we removed it from the heat and we're gonna let it rest. We got about a 10 or a 15 minute rest is what it's telling us on this. So we'll take a look at it. We'll check back soon. All right, what I also like to do is so I can create some nice azu sauce, I like to take some water, about three cups, and I basically just dump it right inside. As everything is draining, you've got some nice fat, you've got some nice flavor, you've got those caramelized onions that are on top. We're gonna let this thing sit as it comes through and as it drips, drips, drips. I'm then gonna take this and create the azu sauce. All right, it's still resting right now, so we just have a few minutes. I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna transfer it onto the cutting board. Um, I had the butcher actually debone the bones, so it's easier for me to serve. So once I cut the twine off of this, it's gonna come apart, and then what I can do is I can carve up the bone separately from the actual cut. So I'm gonna transfer this over right now. I grabbed a couple of, basically just a couple of, um, paper towels just to transfer it over. Now, this is the stuff that's really good, which is right in here. Remember I added the water to create that ajou sauce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a regular pan and I'm gonna transfer the actual ajou sauce right into. So the cool, the important thing is you wanna to try to get all of whatever you can, all of these little pieces of meat or onion that transfer in, because that's where all your flavor is. So I'm gonna transfer that right over. and then we're just gonna put this on a boil. The great thing about this is not everybody likes medium rare. So what this allows you to do is you boil the au jus sauce, and if somebody wants a medium cut, once you take that cut, you can just go ahead and drop it right in the boil for let about three seconds, pull it right out. That's how you take a medium rare piece and then make it medium. All right, so it's still saying rest, but it's got the internal temperature of 136, which is medium rare, which is where we wanna be. Uh, the target was 130, so what we're gonna do here is I'm basically just gonna cut off the twine that the butcher put in place. Again, it tied in the, um, the bone. So here I'm just basically gonna lift it up, I'm gonna peel it back, and then after that, I'm gonna start carving it up. I like to cut the bones individually and just pile them up. For those that want a bone, get a bone. For those that don't want one, they can just get a regular piece of meat. So um, as I said, I'm gonna pull out the uh, temperature as it's resting, gauge. Here it is right here, pull it back, and now we're just gonna uh, basically cut it. There we go, it says it's ready, so we're gonna carve it up. All right, here's a moment of truth right here. We're gonna cut right in and we're gonna see what we have for a cut. It's a medium on the outside, it's like about a medium rare as we start getting into the middle of that bone. As you can see right here, a nice piece of medium rare. It's absolutely cooked perfect. Um, it's over on the medium side, uh, like I said, closer to the medium side versus the rare side. This is a nice piece that's got the bone in. We've got over uh, 13 pounds of beef and I've left some bone cut and I've left some just straight bone. As you can see, it's cutting really nice. And notice the cutting board has very, very little juice. Look at that perfect piece right there. Absolutely perfect. This is the best example of being able to prepare a 13 pound roast. I couldn't find one with a bone in on YouTube. So hopefully everyone can enjoy and Merry Christmas.